Hey everyone, it's Wade again. Uh, sorry I haven't made a video for quite a long time. I've been busy. <laughs> uh, so I've been doing some railings lately and I'm trying to figure out when I'm laying out for balusters on a, on a rake, like up a knee wall, I want to I wanna be able to like make a spacer to help me lay out the balusters. And for the life of me, I can't find anyone's video on the internet of how to figure out if if we're four inches on the horizontal axis, uh, axis what how big is my spacer got to be so that along the rake, I'll lay them out uh, properly. So I didn't use trigonometry because I, I never really became fluent in that, but I'm good at algebra, so I'm gonna use that. And I finally figured it out by myself how to do it, and it's really not very difficult. And it's probably math that you can all remember using. So we'll take this staircase as our example. This was the one that I did the other day, where you need to know your rise and your run. Okay, we're gonna be, we're gonna be uh, dealing with that. So my rise is top of one tread to the top of the next tread. And on this staircase, it was seven and a quarter inches. My run is the length from front of this riser to front of this riser. And that was 10 and a quarter. That's pretty prob probably in the ballpark real close to most household staircases. So I'm going to put this in terms of a right triangle, all right? So along the horizontal axis or along our run, we're 10.25 and our riser is 7.25. Now, I wanna find out if, I'm gonna make this uh, other right triangle here, okay? Along our horizontal axis, we know that we wanna be four inches apart. And we'll call this, we'll call our rise a, and what we want to know is C. We want to know what this is. If four, if this is four, what is C going to be? So we just have to do, we've got to set up a little equality here. We're going to say 7.25 uh, its ratio to 10.25 is equal to A over four, okay? So if you remember back to like seventh, eighth grade algebra, to get that, we wanna get A by itself so we can solve it. Uh, we're gonna multiply both sides by four, okay? When we do that, I'm gonna, I've got my little scientific calculator. You don't need to see the math, but I'll, I'll do the math here so that I can tell you what the answer is. Four times 7.25, and then divided by 10.25. And our answer is A equals 2.83. Okay, so now we know A. So we're gonna make A 2.83. So now I know A and B, I just need to know C. And then, I, and then I'll know how long to make my spacer so that I can lay out my balusters. Now we got to jump ahead to like eighth grade geometry where you started solving right triangles using Pythagorean's theorem, or at least that's when I remember that I did it. We're going to use Pythagorean's theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we know a, a is 2.83 and we're squaring it, plus b squared, four squared, will give us c squared. So when we do <clears throat> this in our calculator, um, this becomes 8.0089 Four squared is, of course, 16. And if we add these together, that will give us C squared. So added together, A, A and B, or A squared and B squared, is 
0.0089, and that is equal to C squared. We just want to solve for C so that we know what this hypotenuse is. And so to solve for that, we're just going to take the square root of C squared. And uh... oh, for crying in the night. Now I can't figure out how to do that. Hold on. I'm getting it. Then C equals 4.899. It's basically 4.9. It's 4.89988 and so on. So we'll just call it 4.9, uh, which in terms of uh, American standard measurement, we're going to say that's about 4 and 15 sixteenths of an inch. 4 and then 0. 0.9. I hope you guys all know how to convert that to, into sixteenths, really. I times 0. 0.9 by 16. And it actually gives me it actually gives me 14.4, which is actually just just more than seven eighths. So let's, we're finished carpenters. Let's be more precise than I was. And we'll call this four and seven eighths strong. So now I can make a little block that is four and seven eighths strong in length. And uh, if you wanted, you could make that block four and seven eighths strong long by whatever half, uh, of the width of your uh, knee wall cap is. And that way you'll be able to use that to mark your, uh, the, the, the center of the, of the cap and the four and seven eighths plus mark it out along there. And then that will tell you how to, uh, or that'll allow you to lay out your baluster so that you achieve four inches along the horizontal axis. So, that's all that's all i'm going to do for this video um there are other videos out there of how to actually figure out where to start you know can you just because you, you're probably not gonna be able to just start at four and seven eighths plus away from your first newel post uh, maybe i'll take care of that in another video but for now this is how to figure out basically how to make your block or what your spacing up your rake will be to achieve four inches on the horizontal axis. So hope that was helpful. It was helpful to me once I finally figured it out. And uh, hopefully I won't be very long before I make another video. Have a great day.